glaze board is a place where you can make decisions about what colors you put on your pots. All of our glazes are represented along the bottom row by themselves, just one dip. And as you go up the board from there, you'll see how all the other glazes cross over that color. For example, if you go up from the turquoise on the bottom, you'll see that the turquoise went on this test tile first, and then shadow blue went over the top of that. Now, all of these glaze tiles were made with the second coat just coming down um, about a half an inch at the most. So the rest of that ran, which can inform your decision about how far to put the glaze down the pot. We really only want people to dip the top edge with that second color to avoid running and sticking to the shelf. When you mix your glazes that you're gonna use, make sure that you use the brushes across the bottom of the bucket first to loosen all of the sediment and stir upward um, for a, a minute or so. And have your pieces ready to go and stir your glaze at the last minute and what we want is for you to saturate the bottom of the piece so that it won't absorb the glaze. And then you can dip your first coat in a color completely easiest with the dipping tongs. You want to sort of help that extra glaze that's dripping off the edge so that it doesn't dry and stay there because we don't want it to be any thicker than it needs to be. And then you, as long as you've mixed up your second color, you can dip the top rim in your second color right away once you see that chalkiness from the first coat and nothing's shiny anymore. So the second coat will take a little longer to dry just because it is um, going over the first coat. And then we want to make sure that everybody pre-washes all their tools and brushes in the pre-wash bucket. And if you need to go to the sink after that, you can to keep cleaning. So again, this technique is uh, saturate the bottom first. And then just a different technique instead of glazing the whole piece one color. We just dipped that in at an angle. What this does is leave some of the raw clay after the first dip so that the second coat can go onto the raw clay and have a crossover so you sort of get a third color that happens when you put the second color over the first so you'll have three different colors there where they come together having a wet large sponge nearby while you're glazing is really important. It, it's easier to get the glaze off of the bottom of your piece. Number one, if you saturate the bottom first by dipping it in some water, but then to take that wet sponge and go ahead and wipe the bottom before your glaze dries will make it a lot easier to get off. And you can see where those two colors overlapped each other that's going to be the third color. You want to make sure that you don't do that too close to the bottom of your pot. You see how it's a few inches up from the bottom there? That, that makes sure that the two glazes don't run to the bottom. And a third technique for getting two colors on your, on your pot is uh, to color the inside a solid color and the outside a solid color. Now you want to make sure that the foot of your pot is the size that you can hold with your fingers. Get your fingers around and really have control um, before you decide to glaze a pot in this technique. Because what you're going to do is once you get that inside liner color wiped around the edge, you're going to dip it into the second color upside down you're going to trap air so that the second color doesn't get into the inside. And you're going to have to do that by holding the bottom foot ring. You 
You want to make sure you go down as straight as you can to trap the air. If you tilt it one way or another, the air will escape and your glaze will get up inside. And the inside glaze is dry, so you can always put your hand in there to give yourself some more time to let the outside glaze dry. And then you're just going to want to take a sponge and wipe um, where your fingertips were and any glaze that escaped onto the bottom of your piece. You want to make sure your bottom is nice and clean. The reason we have to, to keep glaze off of the bottom of all of our pieces is because there's glass former in glaze that would cause it to stick to the shelf in the firing if uh, we didn't clean the bottom of our pieces. Now, if you choose to really... Um, make a pattern on your piece in such a way that you need more than just a straight line at the bottom or if you have an awkward bottom on your piece that um, makes it hard for you to wipe with a sponge what you can do is use latex um, it's a water soluble latex it is plastic you will need to have your own brush that you commit to that um, and follow the directions on the container. We do sell those in the cabinet, and it's a, it's a lot of extra work and a little bit of a learning curve, so I wouldn't use this technique unless you absolutely had to, um, but it is possible, and what we want to say is that once you've painted on your latex uh, following the instructions on the jar, you just have to make sure that you get all of the latex back off the pot. It is plastic, and we do not want to put any even little scraps of latex into the kiln in order for those um, to, to burn. So that's really important for um, fumes in the studio and also just the care of our, our kiln maintenance. So the other thing that you can do with latex is you can color a pot with a glaze and then you can paint designs over that first coat of glaze with your latex. Uh, let's say you wanted stripes or circles, whatever. And then once it dries, you can dip it into the second color and then pull the latex off to expose the first layer of glaze underneath and that shape will for the most part hold up in the firing and you your mark will be made between the two colors based on the shape that you painted out of latex so those are two reasons that you might need to use latex if you want to glaze inside your foot ring what we ask is that you use a ruler and you um, make sure that there's space between the ruler and the inside of your foot ring about a quarter inch at least so that your, your glazed uh, inside of the foot ring is not going to touch the shelf with glaze on it when you load it into the kiln. So this, this ruler test is, is what we want you to do before you make the decision.